Sure, I'll see. Let me give you one. Um, I was on the road uh, supporting uh, my favorite band, Deep Purple. This was, uh, must have been 1970, or it was a long time ago. It was about 73, I think it was. And uh, we, had, uh, we had been invited to a party. Uh, this was in Coventry in England. We'd been invited to a party. Uh, it was a presentation to Deep Purple for about, I don't know, 50 gold albums that they had never, never gotten at, uh, throughout their career. And so uh, Warner Brothers at the time uh, threw this big party in Coventry and uh, presented them all with the gold and platinum albums. So we were, as I say, invited to the party. There must have been, oh, 60 or 70 people there in this huge banquet room, and we just got trashed. And this was a band Elf that I was in at the time. And we were, as I say, just completely rubbed out. And the guys in purple went off to their their suites and everything. We, I think we were all in one room because we didn't really have a lot of money. Um, we didn't care because it was our, you know, one of our first times to, uh, to see Europe. Uh, so we went into it with real wide eyes. We were from a little small town upstate New York. And so for us, it was like, wow, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. So uh, when everybody went up, they closed the bar. I think the bar closed about 11 o'clock as they usually do in England. And we went, this isn't enough. I mean, we can't stop here. So our band, our crew and all of Deep Purple's crew, who are also completely nuts and real badasses, by the way, we looked around and said, well, what are we going to do now? We've got to have something more to drink. So I said, well, the bar's still there. Yeah, it's locked. Well, that's never going to stop us. So we broke into the bar, got all the booze out of the bar, drank what we could in the bar first, took it up to our rooms. Thought, yeah, this is great. We partied our brains out. Um, got up to our rooms. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. Now we're in the hallway. Everybody's running around naked. And the door opened up. and. In came this little woman with curlers in her hair. And I don't know where she was going, a little robe on. And there we were. And she freaked out and panicked, ran out the door. Uh, our drummer at the time had a fire extinguisher in his, uh, in his hand. and uh, She screamed. He panicked, ran into the room, turned it upside down, as you're not supposed to do, and off it went. And it just went everywhere. He didn't know what to do with it. So he went into the toilet, turned it upside down in the toilet. It, it fell, broke the toilet. Toilet broke, now there's water everywhere, just absolutely everywhere. Now we thought, well, so what? And on we went. We carried on until about 7 o'clock in the morning. And uh, about 7.30 in the morning, we heard, there was a knock on the door, police, go away. Police, get out of here. Police, if somebody wobbled to the door and opened the door, yeah, it was the police, all right. Okay, you're out of here. Well, where are we going? You're not going to stay in this town. So they herded all of us and all of Deep Purple's crew onto, onto the bus. We were all in the same bus, the, our band and Deep Purple's crew, uh, got onto the bus, and they said, you're out of town. So they went, yeah, OK. So we, everybody had a terrible hangover in the bus, uh, went up to the city limits, and they uh, took us to the limits and went, don't come back. We had a show that night. Didn't know what to do. So. Uh, we tried at some other hotels. We thought, ah, they'll never know. They had alerted all the hotels, don't let these guys stay there. So we had no place to go. So we went to the airport, drove the bus out onto the, uh, onto the runway and parked the bus. And everyone's laying on the, uh, on the, the runway verge and trying to deal with their hangovers. And of course, we spotted a pub. So we went, drink. All went into the pub, pub got rat assed once again. Um, finally made it to the show. Got to the show. And uh, we were informed that Deep Purple's manager was just about to come and fire us. And this was our first time in Europe. And this was our dream to open for our favorite band. And this was our big opportunity for success. And we were just about to be fired by the manager. So we were uh, in the dressing room, which we promptly trashed, of course, broke everything in the dressing room. We thought, well, what's the problem? We're going to be fired anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So in came Purple's manager, who was uh, the head of our record company as well at the time, because we were signed to Purple Records. And he came in and he started on at us and, and, you know, yeah, well, okay, so we're ready to leave. And we suddenly see the manager kind of brace up a little bit and he looked around him and it was Richie Blackmore, who, of course, I went on to play with, luckily. And Richie walked in the room and heard the, his manager giving us the, uh, the elbow to get our plane tickets and leave. And Richie came in and said, that was the greatest thing that you guys have ever done. He said, we couldn't buy that kind of publicity on earth. That was wonderful. And the manager went, yeah, keep it up, guys. That was terrific. And so we stayed on the tour. And, when, and of course, I'll, luckily for me, I went on to play with Richie. And, uh, and the rest is history. That was a pretty badass time.
That's an awesome story. Yeah, that's one that's of many. That's a great story. Now, do you, 